I'm just catching up with games from recent events and I spotted this miniature from the Russian Team Championship. And I was particularly interested in this game as I played a miniature in exactly this line as well, which I'm going to show you. So this is great fun. So don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe. Let's try and hit 100k. And do consider supporting us via PayPal or Patreon.com. So here we go. This game is Artyom Timofeyev playing white and Alexei Alexeyev playing black. And this opening is, well, not exactly a closed Sicilian. It's not an open Sicilian, but we transpose into a line of the Rossolimo, bishop b5. And this is an opening that I really like with white. It always, uh, I've always enjoyed playing this throughout my chess career because white gets really speedy development and that's evident from this game as well. So what I'm going to do is I'll play through the whole game and then kind of fill in some details afterwards. Black plays the knight into d4. Well, already this gets a bit tricky after this move pawn to e5. So black's knight is attacked and black exchanges off. Knight for bishop. And that gives the knight a square on d5, which looks reasonable. So black has managed to get the two bishops, but he's a little bit behind development, which white exploits with this remarkable move, knight to g5. Now, I love this position. These two knights at the edge of the board like this, or, or well, not so much at the edge of the board. I mean, they're looming in as well. Now, this is such a tricky move, and... It's certainly not the first time it's been played. As uh, I'm going to show later, I've reached this position with white as well. Uh, why knight g5? Well, it's a very crude move, but that knight looks at f7. But also, it opens up the path for the queen to enter the game on one of these squares. So you can see already there's a loose point or a weak point on f7, as usual. We know that from the King's Gambit, but also the knight is loose. So, in fact, there's already a threat to play the queen out here, attacking both these weak points. So it's very dangerous and it's so easy to go wrong. And black went wrong straight away. Played knight c7, which of course looks reasonable to, to move that loose knight away and try to exchange off this piece. But watch what happens. Queen here, threatening mate in one. The queen is pushed away, but only goes back to f3. Again, threatening mate in one. And there's only one way to prevent that. And that's to advance the f-pawn, but white simply takes. Again, threatening mate in one. And now white exchanges and plays queen takes pawn. And it is game over. The rook is attacked if it moves to the side then queen f7 is well disastrous so black tried queen here white took the rook and queen check so the king steps to the side and queen takes knight so black is now only the exchange down well of course it's much worse than that because White's pieces now come into the game. You know, if this rook can reach e1, then that would be terrible. So black is just the exchange down, and well, this is hopelessly lost in this position. Black actually resigned, very understandably. Um, if if bishop here, then one could simply take another pawn, then the bishop comes out, and then the rook gets into the game, and yeah, it really is game over. Now, as I said at the beginning, I have a, a personal connection with this line. I reached exactly this position before. And my opponent played pawn here. And this was, I think, the quickest game I've ever won in a serious tournament game, in a classical game. 
So I played this in 1988 in Thessaloniki, an open tournament alongside the Olympiad. And after f6, I brought the knight back to e4. My opponent took on e5, not the best move. I checked with the queen. Queen takes e5, and that is that. So I threaten two mates in one with this knight or that knight. My queen also threatens the rook and the knight. That's quite a lot to defend against, and of course, it's impossible. Um, black played queen b6, and after knight ed6, my opponent resigned. So I won in 11 moves. As I said, I think that's my shortest ever win in a classical game. Um, just to clear up a few details, if king here, well, it's more than one way to win, but that's pretty good threatening mate here. Um, it's such a tricky position after knight g5. Let me just show you another way that uh, black can actually come to grief, and that's by playing h6. Well, seems like a plausible move to uh, hit the knight, but, well, white can take and play queen f3 check, attacking the king and attacking the knight. Of course, the king can step back, but then queen takes knight, and you know you've, you've won a pawn with a good position. If the king comes forward, then this leads to disaster. Yes, the knight is, is defended, but after this, okay, let's push that knight away. Of course, black can do better than this, but just for the sake of illustration. Now, white play and mate in two. Of course, there's more than one way to win here, but white play and mate in two. Can you spot it? Here we go. Pawn to g4. That's a really neat move. And it's mate next move. So, for example, if g6, then queen d5 is mate. Or, let me see, king takes e5. Queen f5 is mate, and d5 again, queen f5 is mate. Beautiful move, there we are. So yeah, it's not so easy. In fact, actually, if we come back here, of course, black should put the knight in the way there. And, uh, well, I would take white every time in this position, but it's still not so clear. Of course, black's king has been displaced, and it's tricky, but yeah, it's not, not such a simple position, actually. But yes, this position is unbelievably difficult. Um, I should say coming back to f6, which is actually sort of deemed as um, one of the most reliable moves in the position. After knight e4, then, um, well, f5 has been played previously. In fact, there was a game of tiles that went like this. Tile managed to win very quickly, although, again, it's probably okay um yeah it, it's just more difficult for black to play than white basically but it's not so bad but yeah tar managed to win that game very very quickly as well uh so yes it's tricky stuff oh i should mention and one more thing after f6 the game between wesley so and magnus carlsen instead of knight e4 Wesley played queen f3, also a really tricky move. Um, but after this, well, Carlsen emerged from the opening unscathed, um, but still a very complicated position. Really interesting position, actually, but that game ended in a draw. So there we go. Um, an unusual line in the Rossellimo. But uh, yeah, worth trying. In fact, this this whole line I could I could give as an evil traps video actually because it, it is so tricky. There you go. Um, yes, coming back here <laughs> in this position. Yeah, so knight d four that leads to these complications. There are other moves, of course. Queen c seven is. A decent move, as is g6 as well, but that's another story.
Okay, enough detail. Thanks for watching.